good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever the case may be, wherever you are, we welcome you to our live worship services emanating from the Mount Vernon Baptist Church, worshiping at the JLM Abundant Life Center, 2622 West Jackson, Chicago, Illinois. And we pray uh, that you are excited about what's getting ready to happen in this season. And as we go forth, we want to say first and foremost from our pastor, our first lady, and as well as our first family, happy Thanksgiving to you. To our Mount Vernon family as well as our online family, we say happy Thanksgiving. For even in the midst of a pandemic, we know that we have so much to thank God for. And if you don't mind, I want to encourage you to do as Paul encouraged the church of Thessalonica to do. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks. For it's the will of God concerning us in Christ Jesus. And as you get ready, sisters and brothers, to prepare for Thanksgiving, I want to encourage you to follow those CDC guidelines. Wash your hands, wear your mask, and social distance. Before we continue on, I would like to lift up a word of prayer to you. God of heaven, how we thank you and how we praise you for what you have done, Lord. There's nobody like you. We can search all over and we won't find anybody like you. We thank you because you're so awesome, you're so mighty, you're a matchless God. And we thank you for what your word says about you, but we thank you even more so for what you've done in our lives. We're so grateful and we thank you for our pastor. We thank you for the Mount Vernon family. And we pray now, God, that you bless each and every member, bless each and every person who has logged on to this service. And we pray that you would come into their homes and bless them in a mighty way. Even in the pandemic, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. In an effort to maintain our overall safety and well-being of our church family, our limited uh, physical services will be suspended until further notice. So keep track of your email. Check our Facebook page. Check our YouTube page at uh, Mount Vernon Baptist Church, Chicago, and also our Mount Vernon media page on Facebook. You can check those pages to find out when we will make the announcement about our return. But our weekly Bible class will reconvene Wednesday, December 2nd, and we will be continuing our study on prayer. The hymn writer wrote a song by, that says, prayer is the soul's sincere desire, utter, unuttered and unexpressed the motion of a hidden fire that trembles within the breast. The saints in prayer appear as one in word and deed and mind, while the Father and the Son, sweet fellowship, we find. And we want to continue in our, in our series on prayer, for we know that the prayers of the righteous avail much. So let's come together on Wednesday, December 2nd, and join in on prayer. Then our weekly church school will reconvene Thursday, December 3rd, and we want you to want to encourage you that if you haven't been on, to encourage you to come on, get in your class, for we are having a mighty good time. Also, you can't have Thanksgiving without the giving, and we want to encourage you as you prepare your tithes and offering. Don't forget our Thankful Thursday campaign that Pastor has set out. Let's continue to push that campaign get reignited and get restarted with that. Those who have fell off, we want to continue to push toward that campaign. Also, you can give by way of mailing in, by dropping off also in Givelify. As you listen to our pre-recorded messages, we pray that you're encouraged, that you're inspired, and that you're empowered to do better, to think better, so that you can live better. God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving. He keeps on blessing me. Come on, amen. This early Thanksgiving morning choir. Bless y'all. Everything that has breath. All the praise the Lord. He keeps on blessing me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We are... We arranged the chairs on purpose 
so that all of us would stay close together conserving the energy and uh, in good fellowship early on a Thanksgiving morning certainly appreciative for your arrival for your getting up coming to start your day with us here at the church your turkey and your chitlin was be better because you have given him first priority you have acknowledged the fact of his goodness and his mercy and for this certainly we are eternally grateful thanks again for your support on the weekend last Sunday rather uh, Pastor Collins and Great True Vine we were we were packed in there and had a blessed time those of you that shared with us on this week Pastor Barrage in their pre-Thanksgiving revival. Thank you for the support um, that you gave. We're certainly praying for all of our sick, shut-in, and bereaved families uh, for uh, they need our prayers as they are going through. <clears throat> praying for John, Reverend John Rainey and his family. You probably saw on television a person that got burned, caught on fire, and so we are lifting them up uh, before the Lord, the uh, funeral arrangement at this time is incomplete. I don't see either of them here now, but let's keep them in our prayers and we will make an announcement when we get the information. Also for Wilhelmina and her family went down south to share in their funeral service. So let's keep Wilhelmina lifted up also. And again, we ask your prayers for our sick, uh, praying for Mother Mother Harmon was in the hospital on last Sunday. Is she out here? She's not out. We're praying for Mother Harmon, keeping her in our prayers. And Daniel, who is here, praying for you, Ann. For also uh, Mary, Mary Hall's husband, who's been battling and going through. And again, Sheila Langworthy, who's back in the hospital again, fighting, but God is yet good. Thank you, and she thanks you, and we thank you for your prayers and keeping her on the altar. God is still able to do everything for every one of you, and then especially for visitors who stop by to join with us in this early morning worship experience on this Thanksgiving day as you come to share with family and friends. I won't hold you long so you can get back, have your turkey, and get ready for the family. Because you know sometimes it takes some getting ready for family. And so I'm going to be praying for you, you know. Yeah, some folks, you haven't seen them since last Thanksgiving. And you, you just can't. Uh, oh, that door at the end, Gloria out there. Y'all got the arrangement yet? Not yet. All right, I'm sorry. I didn't see y'all. I have my glasses. Thank you. Amen. <clears throat> so we are praying. I wanted to invite our attention. Psalms 107. The hundred and seventh Psalms. Thank those of you supported Reverend Smith last night in his concert at 3555 on last evening. Psalm 107, verses 1 and 2. It reads, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Verse 2 says, Let the redeem of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Look at somebody beside you and tell them, If the Lord been good, say so. Uh, that's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah, yeah. We could have changed that, you know. We could have said, since he been good. <laughs> uh, but the, uh, the message and the urgency is that somebody ought to say so. That there ought to be some representative and somebody 
waving the banner advertising the goodness of God. And the choir just got through sharing for us that every day is a day of thanksgiving. And so I'm troubled sometimes when I look at the army of God. Uh, the church that bears his name that seemingly have laid by become quiet and relaxed and nobody is really advertising about the law. No wonder folks is looking for something else. I mean because of those of us who say we know him don't represent him like he is worthy of the honor and the glory. And, and, and if he's been good, you, you just ought to say so. Uh, we, we ought to say so because of God's manifold blessing. He has dealt with us not according to our deeds, but according to his mercy. And so that's what verse number one says. Then, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. And when you consider and when you think about it, when you look at it, you know it's not because of you, but it's simply because of his mercy. And I like to say that mercy is not getting what you deserve. And grace is getting what you don't deserve. And so thank God for his mercy that he withhold uh, the justice uh, and the punishment that is due us. And he says, mercy. And so he provokes what seemingly to be the congregation of the Lord. Seem like David is now the praise leader or the worship leader and seem like he is encouraging and trying to get the people of God to have a response about the goodness of God. I don't know about to have to twist your arm since he's been good to you. That there ought to be some kind of response. That there ought to be an attitude of appreciation. And I don't know about you and I, you know, I'm just sharing and Look like for some reason around Christmas time, folks start speaking to you. And I figure that out. They want, a, they want a gift or something, you know. They ain't spoke to you all the year. How you doing? But there ought to be an attitude of appreciation all the time. Uh, you're going to enjoy the turkey and the chitlin today, but you ought to say thank you for the bacon and eggs that have them every day. Yeah, you put your foot under the table of somebody serving you, you ought to be appreciative. And, and then God is just so good to us, and we seem to be a crowd that is ungrateful. And so the psalm that seemed to be the worship leader, and he shares in verse 1 and says to us, we have a reason to thank God. And when I looked at it, that's a mighty good reason. He said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Why? For the Lord is good. And then he said, not only is he good, but his mercy endured forever. And some folks in that congregation that, 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 that David was being worship leader was acting like some of y'all that's sitting here this morning. He, he says he was looking for a response when he said the Lord is good, then nobody said nothing. When he said that his mercy endureth forever, they just kept looking down. And seemed like in verse 2, he, 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 he does a ship. He says, since, since y'all ain't saying nothing about he's good, since you don't, you don't understand how merciful he's been to you, he, he kicks off in verse 2 by saying, let the redeemed. Let, let those who have been caught and covered from the hand of the enemy. And I, I'm glad you're in church 
and I'm glad you're sanctified and I'm glad you're a good person but I want to tell you you still got some enemy and I'm just giving you that advice because I used to be kind of naive myself I thought if you treat everybody right I thought if you live holy and treat folks like you want to be treated I thought everybody would do you the same but I had a rude awakening I found out you can be as nice as you want to be and the enemy still shows up. You can do the right thing. You can obey the scripture. You can help people in every angle, but it does not matter. You'll have to go through some enemy territory. It seems like David is saying, I'll get y'all attention. Since look like you don't know what I'm talking about. And when I tell you he's good, look like you saying that don't bother you. And when I tell you about his mercy, it doesn't even get a hand wave. And so he gets personal, says, let the redeem. Let those that he has given his hand of protection, those that's been redeemed from the hand of the enemy. This period of Thanksgiving is a time for you and I to rewind and rethink our past. And all oh, sisters and brothers, if you rewind the clock of time in your own experience, you'll have to say so many times, he rescued you. Yeah, yeah, that's what he means. To redeem means he, he rescued. And not only did he rescue, but he delivered. And, and if that don't, you don't understand that, what I'm trying to say, he brought you out. And don't try to sit up here like he ain't never had to get you out or nothing. To redeem means he recovered. He, he brought you out of some stuff that you wasn't big enough to get out of. And if it hadn't been for him, you would have still been in it. Those who've been redeemed and been washed in the blood of the Lamb. He changes our whole lives. He has done unspeakable and unmeasurable things on our behalf. Oh, I, I, I could just get excited off of that one verse. The Lord is good. <laughs> yeah, I don't care how you turn it up. I don't care how you dissect it, he's still good. Somebody said, well, the pastor, I'm sick, he's still good. Somebody said, you don't know about me being broke, he's still good. Pastor, I got in me, he's still good. Yeah, 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 pastor, you don't know what I'm going through, yeah, but I know he's still good. I don't know how you messed up either, but I know he's still good. I, I don't know what caused your situation, but one thing I do know, he's still good. He's good in the morning. <laughs> Good in the evening time. Good when you mess up. He is still good. And I, I, I thank God for David, this worship leader who encouraged the saints that somebody need to be real representative. Now, 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 now this, uh, this safe soul should not only just be a noise volume, but you ought to say so in your action. Because you see, some folk talk loud, but ain't got nothing to go with it. But David says that if you're going to say so, you also got to live so. Yeah, 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 let the redeem of the Lord say so. Let your action agree with his action. You ought to bless him because of who he is. Yeah, yeah, say so and tell the world through our action that the Lord is good. Whether you got a song, whether you got a sermon, whether you usher, whatever you do, somebody ought to know he's good just by your action. When you smile, they see him in you. When you help somebody, they said that's him. When you walk like he told us to walk, it'll show up that he is good. And I thank God that we serve a good God. We serve a God that is slow to anger. 
but also plenteous in his mercy. Now, not only is he good, but I thank him that his mercy endureth forever. Oh, all of us got a little mercy, but don't push on us too much. But his mercy does not run out with things, does not dry up when the finance run out. But he has enduring mercy. He has a yes, undeserving mercy. He, he has mercy that he gives just because he is God. And as we sit here today, it's not because we deserve his mercy. Because the record said while we was yet sinners, that he died for our sins. Simply because of his mercy. He is a merciful God. He's a God of shame. Therefore, the book of the Psalms seemed to give the church some rehearsal material. If you read the book of the Psalms, you got to change your attitude. Some folk won't read it because they don't want to change. But when you read the Psalm, and here David says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hill from when cometh my help. But then they go on to say, all of my help come from the Lord. That's enough for, for us to let the world know how good he really is. Yeah, and if you don't understand that, the, the church people ought at least recognize Psalm 100. Because Psalm 100 tell us how to go to church. And I wish you'd read it sometime because most of us are too disobedient to the word of God. But Psalm 100 says, this is how we ought to go to church. He says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Don't wait for some preacher to tell you something. But you ought to come in with uh, thanksgiving. And I'm wondering uh, here today, is there anybody here that know you have uh, much to be thankful for? Well, uh, he start off the Psalm 100 by saying, make a joy for Noah unto the Lord all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. Yeah, there ought to be something different about coming in the presence of the Lord. Know you that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people. And the sheep of his pastor. Enter in his gate with thanksgiving and to his corner with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth enduring to all generations. I don't know how you feel, but I thank God here today that I'm a member of the say-so crowd. People look at me strange and ask me why I act like I act, but I'm a member of the say-so crowd. All I'm doing is just trying to advertise that he is good. No, all the time I don't feel like smiling, but I need to smile that somebody will know that he's still good. Yeah, now all the time you may not feel like going, but somebody need to know how good he is. He's so good until he looks beyond our form and keep on supplying our need. 
Thank God for his redeeming power. Thank him for his love and tender mercy. Yeah, when you consider how good he is, it makes you more appreciative. When you recognize how good he's been to you, it makes you want to be good to somebody else. Because he said, if you love me, you are demonstrating by loving one another. Yeah, and so all I got up this early morning to tell you, let us join in the saying so. Yeah, don't let it be no secret that he is good. But everywhere you go, somebody ought to know that he is good. Yeah, and we ought to demonstrate and show appreciation for his mercy. Because his mercy in doing Forever. Thank God. The psalm is saying, Come on, saints, and let's now give him some thanks and, and, and some honor. Yeah, just saying thank you is not the only way to show appreciation. Because uh, sometimes uh, people uh, will say thank you uh, with their mouth, uh, but their heart uh, is far from it. But I hear him saying, if you really love me, uh, Peter, uh, feed my sheep. If you really honor me, uh, just uh, obey my word. Yeah, there ought to be a crown representing our God. And I thought about him, why in the world does it seem like that we so ashamed to demonstrate our love for the master. Uh -huh. You got a whole lot of people to my that's just the way I am. I don't say much and I'm not a noisy person. Well, can I give you some advice? When you come in his presence, he said, I want you to show me something. And if you want to be quiet, wait till you get on your couch. Wait till you leave his house. But when you got a chance, to give him some glory don't come to his house and sit up like you don't be like you're not glad to be here if you want to be reserved in your own quiet place but I hear him saying to that congregation give thing and look what he put a handle on it he said oh give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Yeah, somebody here know he's good because you have experienced his goodness. If justice had a been out, we wouldn't be around today. I'm there you to say so, folks. Well, look at somebody and tell him he's good. Yes, he is. He's so good until he keeps on blessing us while we're messing up. Yeah. And you ought not be ashamed to be a member of the Cecil Crown because if the rappers can get on national television, if the cussers are not ashamed to cuss on television and make millions of dollars, the children of God can't be ashamed to give him some glory in his own house. I know y'all don't listen to that music, but if you're living in this world, you done heard some of it. They say everything, and folks still mind their record. They talk under your clothes. They call you all out of your name. 
and they become millionaires riding high but the people of God is down the down low but I came by the day I want to take David's spot and become the worship leader. And I want to ask somebody, let the redeem of the Lord say so. What you going to say, Pastor Miller? Say been good. What you going to say? Say the word. Say what he said. Say what the word said. Psalm 118. Reiterate the story that the Lord is good. Yeah. Psalm 118. Give us a recap of how good he is. Verse 1 said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Yeah. Verse number two says, let Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Verse number three says, let the house of Aaron now say, his mercy endures forever. Yeah. Verse number four says, let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endures forever. Yeah. Thank God his mercy is still available in 2009. And what I want to know is, is there anybody here who know you need his mercy? Is there anybody here that can appreciate his mercy because mercy got you up this morning mercy gave you another chance thank God for his mercy endures forever what you gonna say the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want what you gonna say the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof what you gonna say though he slay me yet will I trust him what you gonna say weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning what you gonna say the Lord is a stronghold in the time of trouble and he knoweth them that trust in him what you gonna say what you gonna say let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me what you gonna say come unto me all that labor and heavy laden what you gonna say if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side what you gonna say the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear what you gonna say when the wicked in my enemy and my foe come upon me they eat up my flesh they stumble and fail. What you gonna say? Look at somebody and tell them say so. Tell the world how good he is to you. Thank God. I'm gonna let you go now. But are there any redeem? folks in the hound has he ever had to catch you has he ever had to snatch you out of the claws of your enemy has he ever had to drag you out of some stuff that would have literally killed you has he ever had to put a chokehold and just let mercy give you a little moan in the sun well you ought to tell him thank you you ought to tell the Lord thank you yeah, thank you 
He's been good to me. If you know you've been redeemed, grab somebody's hand. And if you're not ashamed to testify, tell them I am. I am redeemed. Tell them I am. I am redeemed. Bought with the price. He has changed. Changed my whole life. I am. I am redeemed. Go and form a high five. And tell them if anybody asks you just who I am, tell them I am. I am redeemed. If folk want to know why you making noise, tell them I've been redeemed. I've been washed in his blood. I've been born. I've been born with a pride. I thank God he done changed my whole life. Anybody here glad to be a member of the redeemed crowd? Well, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Can you give him one more thank you? Can you give him one more thank you? Can you give him one more glory? Can you say yeah thank God I said thank God now just peep over at your neighbor and tell him neighbor if he redeemed me he'll redeem you too he's no shorter than his word he will keep his promise it ain't no secret what the Lord can do. What he done for others, he'll do the same for you. Thank God I've been redeemed. And I don't know about you, but don't nobody have to beg me. Because sometimes when I try to hold my peace, I try to act. I try to act like folk want me to act, but when I hold my hand, my feet start moving. When I try to keep my feet, my mouth start opening. And when I try to keep my feet, my hands start going up because I want somebody to know how good he's been to me. If you know he's been good, go on and hug somebody. Tell him, can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody. Do me like the Lord. He's able. It's an old song. Anybody old school here know just a verse of that? Either we'll sing the chorus, I've been redeemed because the redeemed folks ought to, ought to say so. Somebody in The door is open. I am. Yeah, yeah. Redeem. What you say? Born away. Hallelujah. A bride. Thank you, G. Oh, Jesus. Hey. Has changed hey. my whole life. Ooh. Oh, if anybody. If he asks you just who I am, my Lord, man. tell him I love redeemed. Yes, I am. Oh, y'all help me say, I am redeemed, Lord. Born with a pride, Lord Jesus has changed my whole life. You can come to him right now. 
together and bless him in this place thank God I wanted to close with the message of that old song because it said let the redeem of the Lord say so look, look at your neighbor and tell him nobody but the Lord If you're not ashamed to confess, look, look over at them and tell them this year, the enemy wanted to get me. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, look back at them and tell them this month, been still working on me. Tell them, matter of fact, this week, just won't let me alone. But thank God. The enemy thought he had me. He meant to get you to, in January. He, 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 he had a hit out for you in March. And he, he swore by himself that you wouldn't make it through the summertime. And here we are almost the end of another year. It's not by any goodness of your own. But he kept me. The Lord kept me. We got to go now. But just hold somebody's hand and tell them when the enemy wanted me, the Lord kept me. When the enemy was out to get me, the Lord still kept me. Won't that old enemy? Won't he try to attack your mind? Won't he try to attack your body? Won't he try to attack your finance? Won't he try to attack your romance? But thank God. Just let me say this and we'll go. Just let me confess 
Just let me explain and we'll go. Because y'all wonder why I can holler early in the morning and why I get so excited about God. Well, you need to know if it had not been for the Lord on the side, when I think of his goodness, I really can't help myself, but thank God. Point, 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 point at two people and tell them I'm still here, I'm still here, I'm still here. Bless you. Reverend Smith already had you to hug and fellowship. But go on, I need you to, I need you to talk in church. I'm giving you permission this time. Look at your name and tell him, I don't know what he had to rescue you from. I, I don't know what his hand had to cover you from. But tell him, I thank God for what he's done for me. And tell him, I don't have to tell you. I don't want to take out the time to tell you how good you've been. But can I just tell you, he's been good to me. And every once in a while, my soul cries out. A hallelujah just show up. A thank you, Jesus, just pop out. Amazing grace just come on. I don't have to make it up. I don't have to keep it in reserve. But every time I turn around, I think about how good he's been. Just look at me up here. My legs are still working. My hands can still wave. Bless you. Whoa. Thank you. Somebody got their chitlin on time, or we got to get out. Let us stand. Be nice. Uh, no, no, this ain't practicing turkey. These are good food. This is good food. Get, these are good food. I, I know where you can get some turkey necks at for cheap if you want to practice. These are nice whole turkey. These are nice turkeys, and I want to thank you. For all of our visitors who got up to be with us this morning. Nail, who is that you got with you? Is that your? What Nail there? Is that your grandson? A grandson, and amen, taller this year. Thank you so much. Been with her. Your daughter and son-in-law, Mother O'Neill. Where y'all at? From St. Louis, right? Amen. That's right. Good to see y'all here with us this morning. And anybody else brought guests? Now, Loretha, that ain't no guest there. That's mine. <laughs> I'm glad to have you. Thank you, though, baby. Who's that over there? Tiffany. You brought a guest this morning from work, from school. Amen. Bless you. Invite somebody. Thank you so much. We bless God for all that he has done and all that he shall continue to do. Now, Lord, it's again that we thank you now for your amazing grace, for how you kept us and what you have allowed us to do. We pray now for safety. We pray for fellowship among families and friends, that you'll be peace. And then we thank you for your redeeming hand. Keep us as we go forth. Dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. We ask it all in the mighty and majesty name of our Lord and our Christ. And the people of God said, Amen. Listen.